Hey guys, I'm back at the Tiny Digs Hotel in Portland, Oregon. I interviewed the husband and wife team that designed and built all of the tiny houses you see here at the hotel. And they decided to share their 10 best tips and tricks for designing and building your own tiny house. This week's video is brought to you by Humless, solar power on the go. Hi, I'm Pam Westra, and we're here at Tiny Digs Hotel with our builder extraordinaire, my husband, Bruce. We're two-thirds of our team. She's the artistic, and I'm the builder, and then our son, Kevin, is artistic and a builder, so he's an integral part of the team also. My dad was a builder and contractor, and so I kind of grew up in the trades. And then I went to school to become a chiropractor, and I was a chiropractor for 25 years. And then we retired and we traveled around for seven years on the road trying to figure out what we were going to do when we grew up, so to speak. <laughs> That's kind of when the tiny house movement really got wheels under it, so to speak. <laughs> tiny digs came about through our love for the tiny house movement. So we've built nine houses here at Tiny Digs Hotel. We wanted to showcase different roof lines and different styles so that if somebody came here to stay and said, hey, I'm thinking about building a tiny house, they would have a lot of different ones to look at and see what really felt right aesthetically to them. And it's been really fun doing the themes. Everybody loves a themed something. They don't want to go somewhere that has the same-o, same-o, like a Marriott or a Hilton. You know, they're looking for a different adventure. It is challenging as a builder having to do a new one-off every time, but it's kind of an opportunity to showcase my own talents too. Yes, I could build a functional, simple house. We could also build a fancy, more technical, different roof lines that the average person may not want to try, but at least it would give them an idea of what was possible. So now that we've been doing this for a while, we thought it would be fun to share some tips and tricks for people that are contemplating building something on their own. So these are just things that have either happened to us <laughs> as a result of a mistake or things that we figured out that, hey, that works, you know, maybe somebody else can benefit from it. So we're gonna go through like 10, well, maybe even a bonus one at the end, tips and tricks of building a tiny house. Number one, when you're done doing all your plumbing and electrical in the house, make sure before you put your wall sheeting and insulation on to go through your whole house and videotape that. You really want to know where those plumbing lines are, where the electrical lines are, so that you can not put a nail through one of those once it's all sheeted. Number two, <laughs> remember to put the shower stall in the house before all the walls are closed in. The shower stall is bigger than any door. And I know this from personal experience. When we built the yellow caboose, the Arthur, which was actually our eighth house, so you would think that I would know this, <laughs> we had the walls up, the doors in, and no shower. Fortunately, we didn't have the roof on. So to fix the situation, we had to lift the shower stall over the roofs and back down onto the floor. Great fun. <laughs> Number three, there has to be a structural link between the house itself and the trailer, or what we call the foundation of a tiny house. If you don't do that at the correct stage, which is generally right after you put the subfloor on, then it makes it much more difficult later. There is another thing that I wanted to mention that's kind of tiny house specific. How a person could tie the walls as well as the subfloor into the uh, trailer frame. And that is by taking threaded rod completely from the top plate of the wall all the way through the wall, down through the bottom plate and down through the trailer. And so I always think in my mind, what if I actually took the house, the whole house, 
and turned it upside down and hung it from the trailer? Would it stay together? And that's the kind of mindset I think is a safe way to think about tying your house together. Number four tip, use RAM board on your floors. That's kind of a new product for me. I didn't know it existed. We used to put the red rosin paper down on our finished floors to try and protect it from the carpenters dropping tools on it. And the RAM board has really saved us. So um, look for that in your stores. Okay, number five. Do you want ladders in your tiny house in both your lofts or your single loft? Or do you want stairs? I really like stairs but you do have to have extra room to put stairs in. The beach house, which we're in today, has the ladder. The design didn't work out for us to put a whole set of stairs in. So we needed to save some space and use the ladder. It's a large ladder though. The steps are really wide and we did that for safety. And it's totally fixed to the loft. It's not a movable ladder. So a fixed ladder to me is much safer if you have to go ladder. On all our other houses though, we have stairs. We feel they're much safer for people and you've got so much storage under them. Tip number six would be bump outs. A bump out is a structural feature that is an addition to the main four walls. It's like a added on small closet on the front or back end of your trailer. You can't put one on the side really because there goes your travel restrictions of eight and a half feet wide. The bump out is the perfect space to put a sink in it or even a toilet in it. Number seven is space saving tables or desktops. In this house, we have a really cute one that we didn't have to build, so that was even a time saver. We bought it from Ikea. So this is a nice table that has drawers, so it has storage in it, and it has two leaves, so you can use one leaf independent of the other. That really worked for this design because it folds up so small. In the barn, we have the table that folds up against the wall. It looks like a picture on the wall. It goes up, has a frame around it. When you bring it down as the table, there's even another picture behind it. And then in the bamboo house, we have a table that folds up from the wall and it's a real nice spot for two people. Tip number eight, how is your roof gonna help you use your space or use your design to its utmost. If you have a more modern design, you might want to go with a shed roof. It suits the modern style. If you want to have the biggest loft size, you might want to consider a barn roof. If you're building a more traditional style of a tiny house, you might want to use gable roofs, maybe two different size cables or two different slopes. So using your roof style to maximize your design and your space. And also, you would want to consider your roof design based on your skill level. A shed roof is relatively easy with minimal instruction. A person, I think, could build a shed roof. But a gable roof, especially if you have a double slope gable, is a little bit more degree of difficulty. Tip number nine. Consider your roofing materials with your end goal for your house in mind. If you want to consider just budget, then you could go with a corrugated roof. If you have a middle of a line budget, you could go with asphalt or traditional shingles. If you have more of a budget, you could go with metal standing rib roof. Standing rib is the most durable of all the roofs. So if you're planning on keeping your house a long time and you have the extra money, go with the standing rib. As a beginning builder, I would probably recommend corrugated metal for the roofing material, simply because it's so easy to work with, it's inexpensive, you could wreck a whole piece and it wouldn't be the end of the world. Tip number 10. This tip has to do with the placement of your entry doors. Is it going to be over the wheel well or the fender of the trailer? Or is it going to be in the front wall 
or the sidewall because there are kind of distinct advantages and disadvantages of each of those placements. If it's on your sidewall, then the tip would be to put it on the passenger side of the tow vehicle because that means that when you pull up into along a street or in a parking lot, your access door is easy to get to. And if it goes over your fender, you have to bear in mind you're going to have a step down into the house. And a lot of people don't like that idea because if you forget there's a step right near your entry door, then it can be kind of a jarring experience. But we have the beach and the bamboo and the modern have the doors over the fenders. They work out fine. And the office, we bypassed putting it over the wheel well. We have the door all the way down to one end of the trailer so that we could have a French door. And those are always fun to do. The third door option is on the ends of your house. And that could be a very pleasant feature because when your house is all set up and you can put a porch over your trailer tongue, then your door is right there automatically on your porch. So my tip on the whole thing, I guess, is to be aware of the end result that you want concerning where you have your entry door. So we said we do 10 tips and tricks for building your tiny house, but for me as the helpful designer of the build team, my 11th tip for you is have fun with it. Go through Pinterest and get lots of ideas. Do you want to design it like a caboose, like we did one of ours? Or do you want a Victorian style house? One of the most fun things that I've found with the houses is going out and picking out really cool lighting. It's like the icing on the cake for me. Some of my lights are built out of things that you wouldn't even think was a light. In the bamboo, for instance, they're all lanterns that were in a, the garden center, and I electrified all those. On the caboose, I took an old kerosene lamp and electrified that. So have fun with it. And as the builder, I have a bonus tip also. <laughs> when you consider building a tiny house, pick out where you're going to build it with care. Have that in mind. The second part of that tip is where are you going to put it when you're done? So try to have in mind where you're going to build it and where you're going to put it. I hope you guys learned a few things about how to design and build your own tiny house. I'll be back soon with another video for you with tiny house or travel adventures. See you later. <laughs>